Look, for Carolina Panthers fans, I get it. The draft, especially after last year, especially after the year and kind of subsequent years that the Panthers have had over the past couple seasons, the draft, I, I mean, I, look, I get it. It's not the most exciting thing all the time. But you're also, I mean, you know, it's a what have you done for me lately type of situation as well. You're coming off of a year last year where you had the number one overall pick. The city was literally buzzing like everybody was excited to see not only who was going to be the number one pick, but for the number one pick. Bryce Young came into the city like everybody just lit up. Training camp, everybody just lit up to see Bryce Young, to see what Bryce Young was going to do. And then, you know, from the opening game on, everybody still throughout the year wanted to see what Bryce Young was going to do, what improvements he was going to make. And also, how can we shift blame on what the problem is with the Carolina Panthers? But with that being said, it may not be the number one overall pick to, that you have to look forward to. It's not even a first round pick right now, as of right now, that you have to look forward to. But I will say there is plenty to look forward to for this draft when you look at what the Carolina Panthers need versus what they could have the opportunity to pick in this draft. But I want to welcome you in to the Keep Prowling podcast. I'm your host, DJ Bill, and I'm back once again. And we're going to talk all about this draft okay let's let's start first let's just get right up right, right on into it while you hitting that subscribe button down below you hitting the like button you sharing this video if you are in the video formats you doing all of those things while you're doing that i do want to say let's jump into the needs right these are the things that these are the positions that the panthers need the most okay I, and, and this is looking through the depth chart AP said, this is what this is from AP, specifically, the needs of the Carolina Panthers, what they need, uh, especially in those early rounds, because typically you address your needs as early as you can, uh, because that's where you typically get the most value. Now, there's always some gems, there's always some hidden pieces in there, and you never know, but early on, and especially the picks we're going to talk about, the these are the needs that's going to have to be addressed. So you got edge rusher. Right. You got wide receiver, you got cornerback and you got tight end. Now, for, for some of us, we may be wondering why. Why are these needs like why? Why is it? Why is edge rusher an, a need? And this is an interesting one for me, because when I think about edge rusher, I don't even know if edge rusher. I think edge rusher is a need because you can never have too many really good edge rushers. I don't see the Panthers utilizing whatever their first pick may be on an edge rusher. Um, and surprisingly, one of the surprise, one of the surprises for what isn't needed is offensive line. And we talked about this and we've talked about how this offensive line needed to grow. We talked about how this offensive line needed some new pieces. It needed to be retooled a little bit. You know, it needed some new guys and, Interestingly enough, when you come into the draft where you have where the Panthers have so many picks, offensive line is not a part of the primary needs that is needed, which on one hand is surprising, but on the other hand is a good thing. It's good that you don't need offensive linemen because that means you did what you were supposed to do in free agency, at least to uh, the Associated Press and how they feel about these things. So. That, that's the thing, you know, that that's that's the thing because when you look at edge rusher, of course you trade Brian Burns, but you do pick up Jadavian Clowney, which I think for I think for Panthers fans, I think that's a lot there's a lot to be happy about with Jadavian Clowney. Because Jadavian Clowney just had one of his best seasons last year in Baltimore. And Baltimore doesn't really have an elite rusher. So coming to Carolina and another good defense, especially if you can add somewhat of an early edge rusher in there and that, and that could be fourth round right that could be uh somewhere in the third or the fourth round if you can add another edge rusher that becomes big in Jadavian Clowney's continued growth because I think the interior line we know that the interior line for the Carolina Panthers is really good and edge seems to be what's missing, but you put Javion Clowney on one side, and you can find somebody else to put in that other on that other end. I think is big. Corner is an interesting one too because um, Dante Jackson was the one that was traded for um, Deontay Johnson, right? So to add a little bit of wide receiver, uh, you know, to add that wide receiver guy that you needed, you had to get rid of Deontay uh, Deontay Johnson, and that. 
hurts you a little bit on your corner depth. But I will say a guy that's out there, the reason why I wouldn't go, I mean, it really depends on where the pick is. Because, I mean, some of the guys that are linked to the Carolina Panthers is Max Melton and uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry, who it's not the necessarily that the Panthers will be in that position, but looking from, from the research I've done, looking at where the Panthers potentially may pick, these are the guys around there, whether they trade up and they find themselves with an opportunity to grab this guy or that guy, or they trade back, right? They might still be able to grab these guys later. So I think Corn is an interesting one because I think Stephon Gilmore, with him being still out there, I think that would be kind of a Panthers move, right? You get you a veteran presence out there. You can work with J.C. Horn, make J.C. Horn that, you know, that much better. Gilmore's had injuries here and there too, so he can kind of talk to J.C. Horn and figure out what, what, what might be the injury concern because it could be conditioning. It could be some workout that he's doing. It could be some supplement he's not taking, whatever it may be, right? So that's the thing about it. So I think I think adding Gilmore, I would I would even and I'm gonna grab this real quick because I'm gonna I'm gonna actually take the notes as we go along, but I think I would take cornerback out of that equation. I think tight end is definitely a need. Um I think tight and I'm about to go over the depth chart real quick as well, but I think tight end is definitely a need. I think tight end is definitely a need. I think wide receiver, you can't never have too many wide receivers. Let's, you know, I don't, I don't think, for me, unless it's Marvin Harrison Jr., I don't think wide receiver is a primary need for that very first pick that you have right now, unless it's just somebody who you you just you can't say no to, right? That you know maybe, but I think wide receiver is still a need. I think edge is a pretty big need, and I think tight end is a pretty big need. Um, now, let's look at – let's let's just – to confirm, let's look at the depth chart and see exactly what we're looking at in terms of uh, what we have. So, of course, you got quarterback Bryce Young. you got running backs Chuba Hubbard and Miles Sanders. Um, so, I think running back is good. I think quarterback is good. At wide receiver, you got Jonathan Mingo, Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen with Terrace Marshall, David Moore, and – Amir Smith Marset backing those guys up as well. So I think when you look at that group, I think you could add one more guy. Because the thing is, Mingo, unless you just trust Mingo, right? Like right now. I'm talking about right now. Like now Mingo's going going into his second year. He had he didn't have his greatest season. He had some ups, he had some downs, but I think there is potential in Mingo, so that's why they may not go for receiver, right? They may go for a guy that can add some depth in the receiver room, but they may not go receiver initially because of the guys they have. Deontay Johnson has been there, done that. Adam Thielen has been there, done that. Jonathan Mingo, working with those two veterans, I think could be a guy who could be there, done that, right? Who who could get to that point? So I think I think receiver. I think you're good. Um, I think you're good. I think you could never have too much. I think. You know, Xavier Leggett is projected to go third round. I think if he's still there in the third round, I think you take him, right? I think you take him because with in terms of tight ends, I think there's some guys you could grab too because, of course, I feel like Brock Bowers is not going to be there. But, you know, he's the top tight end in this class, and he's probably not going to be there by that time. So that's another issue you got to think about too. So I feel like with that, like – you know, Ben Stennett might be, you know, Ben Stennett might still be around, uh, you know, in terms of when the Panthers pick. He's one of those guys that I wrote down that's around the Panthers. I'll give you this full list here in a minute. But I think because of that, I think I, th- I do think tight end could be something because, you know, it really depends on how much you trust Tommy Tremble and Ian Thomas. Um, and neither one of those guys have overly impressed me yet. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean they can't. That doesn't, you know, what opportunity, you know, will change because, you know, comes opportunity. So they can maybe get the opportunities. You never know what could happen. And especially under a new offensive regime, regime too, with, you know, second year quarterback as well. Like you, you never know. And help in the wide receiver room. You never know. So that's another thing too. Like, you know, there's, there, there's, there's a chance here. I think the O-line um, with, 
Ikunwa, Damian Lewis, Austin Corbett, Robert Hunt, and Taylor Moton. I think I think there's a reason why offensive line has become top of the priority list. To there, there's nothing wrong with depth, but it's not necessarily the top of the priority list right now anymore. Um, I think I think if you find yourself in a position where there's a really good offensive lineman sitting right in front of you and you have no choice but to pick it, you know, to pick that guy, I'd say do it. Um, I would say do it. Now, if it's a – I don't know if I'd do it if it was a guard uh, because because Robert Hunt is a good young guard. Um, and even, you know, I mean, either way, because, I mean, both of their guards are, are pretty not good, so – I don't know. That's that, that that's that's tough. I think I think you can still go O lineman, but hmm, there's there's a lot to be said. Uh, you know, because I because I feel like initially when my knee jerk reaction was offense, offense, offense. You got to go offense. Why would you go edge? Why would you go corner? Why would you do that? Right. But you know, as as we sit down and we think about it even more, I'm sitting here thinking, man, maybe you, maybe you do go defense here. Because um, I think tight end would be a good one if it's there. But I think honestly, you probably could get a tight end later on in the draft too like um you know when I read off the picks you'll you'll understand why a little bit but defensively um we got Derek Brown on the D end you know the two tackles with Shy Tuttle and Ashawn Robinson who you just grabbed from the Giants Jadavion Van Clowney as your edge rusher uh or your primary edge rusher at least Shaq Thompson uh who should be healthy uh, you know healthy as well Jared Josie, Jewel, DJ Wanham, and then going to the corners or the secondary, J.C. Horn, Xavier Woods, Jordan Fuller, Dane Jackson, and uh, Troy Hill. So I think when I look at the defense, I really start to feel like edge could be a thought. What you guys think? I mean, to me, like I feel like edge really could be because I feel like Clowney is a good pickup. I think Clowney dampens the blow of Brian Burns being gone. But I think you can never have too many elite edge rushers. You can never have too many really good edge rushers. Uh, if we just want to say it like that, you can never have too many impact edge rushers. Um, you know, we, t- we talked about it before with, with the Giants and their kind of NASCAR packages and, and all of their packages with elite rushers in it. You can't, you, you can never have too many really good rushers. But then when you look at the corners as well, with J.C. Horn and Dane Jackson and then your nickel being Troy Hill, I wouldn't, you know, corner is a depth position. So if you grab a really elite corner, it's going to take some pressure off J.C. Horn. And sometimes I think even just taking pressure off a guy can help with some of their injury concerns too. So that's another one where I think it's very, you know, it's – very, very interesting. Let's look at the picks that the Carolina Panthers have, though, because I think, you know, it's important to, as we look into potential trades, we look into potential moves they can make, um, We even just looking at the picks that they can make, you know, as as you, on your own time, do, you know, make your picks, do your mock drafts, whatever you do, it's inter- it, it is always good to know what they have. So for 2024, the Carolina Panthers have the number 33 overall pick, which is a second rounder, a second rounder, and a thir- number 39 pick. They got a third rounder in the, in the number 65. They got the number 101, which is a fourth rounder. They got the Giants' fifth rounder in number 141. They got Tennessee's fifth rounder in 142, and Pittsburgh's seventh rounder in 240. So – they have a lot of picks. Um, they have a lot of picks. What is that? Seven? Yeah. They have they have a lot of picks. I mean, now, I, I get you know, it's only seven rounds, but um, but they have a good amount of picks because some of the fifth, sixth, seventh rounders, you know, everybody can't play, right, in terms of everybody can't get on the field because you can only have so many people on the field at a time. So some of those – picks kind of at times become a wash it's it's an opportunity for a guy who just has to try and prove himself so you know I feel like even just early you know not having having that second second round pick 
feels a little bit better than not having a first round pick because the 33 pick is not a first round pick, but it's so close, right? You know, it's so close to the uh, to the first you know, you know to the first round. So, I mean, they have plenty of picks, like in terms of having opportunities to do what exactly they need to do. But I want to jump into this mock draft real quick because AP AP put out a mock draft, and the reason that is interesting is they actually have and I, I you know I'm, I'm curious I'm gonna ask you guys this question then I'm gonna get into it do you guys think that the Panthers should trade into the first round right because if you trade into the first round you're probably now there is times when you trade players to get into the first round but more than likely you're going to trade picks right whether it be they're going to probably have to trade they have two second round picks so they're going to have to trade one of those second round picks probably the earlier of the two the number 33 but then at the same time you know do they need to right do they need to with having two picks not back to back but really close together do they need to make that trade um i think for me my knee-jerk reaction as you guys let me know uh you know in in the comments below my knee-jerk reaction is i kind of like the idea of trading into the first round because you have two second round picks I like cuz like I said before sometimes sometimes the 5th through the 7th round picks are kind of washes. You never know what you're going to get from those, right? It's a liter- like the draft is a lottery within itself, but we talking about literally the lottery when you get to the 5th, 6th and 7th round because you just don't know, you know, you got guys from small schools, you got guys um who haven't had a lot of playing time, you got guys who uh, you know, maybe f- have just drop down the board for whatever reason, but there's always some steals in there too, you know? I mean, even just look at, think about Brock Purdy, right? He's probably the the one of the most famous ones out of the uh, late round picks being the last pick of the draft and playing in the Super Bowl last year. So, you know, you, you can never say no, I think. I think, you know, I think that's the thing. You can never, you can never say you you can you you know there's nothing the more picks you have the more opportunities you have to get it right but also the more picks you have the more opportunities you have to get it wrong so we'll see we'll we'll definitely see but as, as we said before the panthers would be sitting at the 33rd pick right so the panthers would be sitting at the 33rd pick and With them sitting at the 33rd pick, there's potential for a receiver in uh, Lad McConkey, right? There's 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 potential there for 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 him. Um, of course, you have Xavier Leggett, but like I said, in the second round, I think I think it would be a little bit of a reach. I think there's possibility for Leggett to be a third round pick, and maybe instead of drafting. Instead of drafting a, um, instead of drafting a receiver right there, maybe maybe you draft one of these uh, pieces that you need to add depth to. And by depth, I mean you you're drafting a guy who's probably going to start day one. Um, so you know that's that's the other thing too because there's Max Melton. Um, you know, of course we talked about. Um, Kool Aid McKinstry, but you gonna have to trade up to get to get him. I feel like I feel like guys got their eyes on him. And that's gonna be a that's gonna be a tough one to to go grab. Um, yeah, I, th- I think I think the thirty third pick. I think position wise, I feel like the Panthers should look at. I don't know. It just depends on what's there, man. Like that's the tough part. It, it depends on what's there. But I mean, I'd probably say I'd probably say edge. I don't. If we still, if you stick it in the second round, I would say edge or tight end, right? I would say edge or tight end. Um, I don't, I can't remember where Ben Stanot would be by this time, but I think that's that could be a possibility. Maybe you go, maybe maybe you go with Ben Stanot because that could be one of those guys. I know in this in the mock draft before, I'm trying to remember. I think it was. Was it Jalen? I think it was Jalen Polk. It was Jalen Polk who, who they said, you know, that's a guy the Panthers could go after in, in that position. So, knee-jerk reaction, I would say trade up because, I mean, I, I like what they did here. 
in, in, in this mock draft. Because you can stay at 33, keep your 39th pick, and probably draft two of your needs pretty early in the draft, which would be good. But I do like the idea because listen to this. Let's let's just let's just let's listen to it, hear them out, and let's see let's see what we think. So this is the Carolina Panthers mock trading with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right, to get up to the 26th pick. So the Panthers will send their first pick in the second round, which is pick 33, their fourth pick, number 96, and their fifth pick, 141, to slide up seven spots. Now, that, another thing is this depends on what you get back, right? This depends on what you get back to slide up seven spots. It doesn't say, and I don't know if any of the – yeah, I don't none none of these necessarily say what they would get back in return, but obviously you'd probably get something back, some sort of pick. And when I look at it, if you're giving up a second, a fourth, and a fifth, you probably would at worst get a third back. Because and you think about it, you're, then you're looking at your first you you got your finally got your first round pick, you got your second round pick at 33, then you go back to your third round pick. Um as well, and I mean the thing is, kind of like we said before, they have a couple of picks like in terms of they have multiple picks in a couple of rounds so even losing that you know you'd lose that fourth rounder but you got two fifths you know so it it, it's just one of those interesting things man it's one of those interesting interesting dynamics um i think trading back in could be good but honestly i think trading back in could be good as if it's got something to do with those fifth, sixth, and seventh round picks. But the hard part about it is people are not going to trade you for fifth, sixth, and seventh round picks uh, to get into the first round. You're going to have to give up a little bit of capital, um, kind of like they did in in this mock. And interestingly enough, they they mocked the Panthers to take Jackson Powers Johnson, which kind of like I said before, if he's there, take it. If he's not, you know, let's see. And And also, this could be – I don't know if they do this, but if they're planning on taking the offensive lineman, they may try to move, you know, Iki Kwanu, right? It, it really just depends, you know, because he had a kind of a down year last year. Um, if you feel like you kind of hit a wall with him or hit a ceiling with him, you might trade him to go grab another tackle in, in the first round because that's where you're going to get a tackle who's going to start right away. So that, that's that's another one, too. Um, I didn't, you know, this guy, this guy here is a interior O lineman, but I, I'm just saying in general. I mean, the Packers mo- got mocked to take Graham Barton one ahead of them, and then I want to say, yeah, the Cardinals picked Amarius Mims a tackle after them. So it just depends. And this is when I was saying Kool Aid McKinstry would be there. If that's another thing, you you wanted to grab a guy who's probably going to be. Somewhat of a shutdown corner. You put him with J.C. Horn. You put him with Dane Jackson, uh, Xavier Woods, and all those guys. And now your secondary is is probably not only complete but bolstered too. So it, it'll be very interesting. But I want to leave y'all with this. I want to leave y'all with this. I want to leave y'all with some names that you guys can look up, Google, research, watch highlights. And I want you to come back. I want. I, I no seriously. I'm giving y'all homework. I want y'all to go look up some of these guys. Whether whether you know know the guy or you're like oh that that's definitely a position to need let me go check check this guy out and let me know in the comments below who you think the Panthers should pick with that first pick whether they have to trade up or whatever it may be um, and also you know throughout the rest of the draft because like I said before Xavier Leggett is linked to the Panthers but he's a projected third round pick so that's another one too that I, I think a lot a lot of people have kind of fallen for a little bit and you know of course he's from the Carolinas he uh played at South Carolina so keeping him in Carolina nothing wrong with that so you know and I think he could be a good receiver to add to add to this group too so especially right right now you're not having any not really having any tight ends at the moment of course I think you grab one you know a Ben Stanot possibly you grab one but we we will definitely see but I'm gonna leave you all with these names you'll hear some of these repeated uh from earlier in the conversation but I will leave you all with these names and I, I need y'all to let me know who do you think the Panthers should pick with any of their picks not only that first pick on Thursday not the first pick on Thursday night but not only their first pick that they make in that second round but 
also, you know, throughout the rest of the draft. Maybe even from these names, maybe even somebody I'm not even thinking about. So, of course, you got Xavier Leggett, as I just mentioned. You have Jalen Polk, wide receiver from Washington. You got Max Milton, cornerback from Rutgers. Ben Stanott, tight end from Can- from uh, Kansas State. Um, of course, Brock Bowers just – I think it's highly unlikely because I don't think they'll trade up early enough because he's probably – He's probably a top 10 pick, so I think because he is the top tight end in this draft. But Brock Bowers is is another one that, you know, you can just see what you think of, of him and should they, you know, they have to make make some moves to, to pull that one off. Um, Darius Robinson, edge rusher out of Mizzou. Jackson Powers Johnson, the aforementioned uh, from Oregon. The, and these two, these last two that, that I'm talking about right now are with a potential Tampa Bay trade or a potential, uh, let's see, who else is ahead? Green Bay trade, a potential Pittsburgh trade, right? Like these are the guys that you'll probably run into, a potential Detroit Lions trade or Card, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? So that's where that's going to fall into or Buffalo or something like that. So. You got Jackson Powers Johnson, O lineman, interior O lineman specifically out of Oregon, and then you got Kool Aid McKinstry. Um, so that that's at a corner out of Alabama. So there's plenty of options to to do a little you know a little last minute research before the test on Thursday. Okay, so I I just I'm just, I'm just curious what you guys think of these guys and who you guys feel like the Panthers should pick just to have a little fun with it. Feel free do. Have fun with it. Do a mock draft, like you know, do one of those mock draft simulators and put it in the put it in the comments. I you know I, I definitely want to see what you guys think about this draft because it's because it's always a lot of fun to uh, to do that as well. But definitely hope you guys enjoyed the show. This has been the Keep Prowling Podcast. As always, we're on all major podcasting platforms. The Keep Prowling Podcast is on all major podcasting platforms. So be sure to give us a listen. You can take us on the road with you, whatever you need um also you can take us to work okay i'm working right now but you can take us to work if you need to you know to just help you get through the day a little bit more but definitely hope you guys enjoy the show this has been the keep prowling podcast are there any panthers topics that you want to hear us talk about let us know in the comments below